How's everyone doing tonight? Good. Turn to your neighbor and say, you look good. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I'm better. You look amazing. Come on, you guys. God is so good. And all the time. God is good. You guys, we have been talking about the conference because God is going to do great and amazing things. Amen. We are so happy that you, uh, people that came from Portland and those that will be coming uh, from different cities to uh, be with us at this conference. You see, this conference is not just like Lilia and Brittany and others have mentioned. It's not for a show. It is not just for us to sing a song to you guys or just to even show preaching, but it is to expand the vision that our church has, and that is for the masses. We are believing for every single person to be touched and to be saved in our city, and not just our city, but our region, and not just our region, even our country. Come on. Our pastor has such a huge vision. He believes that we will be able to even branch out uh, further down the road, but we are believing that God is on a move, amen? And we want to partner up with the Holy Spirit. We want to be part of what God has for us. And uh, we've, uh, this year and a year back, we've seen what God has been doing. He's been healing lives. He's been, even that uh, Nehemiah, uh, that amazing testimony, I was just weeping in tears when I heard uh, him share his testimony that night because it was so amazing. We were specifically praying as a church on Friday night prayers for asthma, for people to be able to be set free from asthma. And that conference, he received his healing. Come on, come on, you guys, give God a hand of applause. That is truly our God. He is the God that um, we serve. And we would just want to... Uh, I want to just talk a little bit about a, um, a scripture, and I want you guys to open up your Bibles, and I'm just wanting to focus on two points, two characteristics, and I want us just to open up to Genesis 25, verse 27. And I want to talk about a man named Jacob um, in the Bible. And some of you guys may know him, and he pretty much, he has a bad reputation, you would say, because he is known to be cunning. He is known to be a deceiver and uh, a liar. And, but I do not want to focus on his bad traits tonight. I want to focus on two amazing traits that this man has that brought him to a place of blessing, that has brought him to a place of breakthrough and a place that he met face to face with God. So I want to talk about those two traits with you guys tonight. Um, are you guys ready to receive tonight? Do you guys believe for good things? Come on, I want you guys to just bow your heads real quick with me, and we're just going to pray and ask for Holy Spirit to join us tonight and for him to touch you. Lord, we thank you so much, Father, for every single person that is here, everyone that is watching on live stream, and everyone that is sitting. Lord, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that this is a divine notice for them, God, that you want to do something in their hearts tonight, that you want to do a stirring in them, God. And I just pray that you touch them, Lord, that you open and awaken their hearts to belong to you, God, to desire you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. So Genesis 25, verse 27, let me read. But before I read, let me just give you a backstory, just enough for you guys to get the idea. There was a man of God named Abraham, and Abraham's promise was a son, and his son was Isaac. And that was God's promise to Abraham. And Isaac had two sons, This is which is um, Esau and Jacob. They were twins. And the firstborn was Esau and Jacob was the second. Back then in the days of the Bible, um, just back then, the firstborn was the one to get the birthright and the blessings. And the second one is pretty much too bad, too sad. Is there anybody that are second uh, borns in here? Come on, raise your hands high. I was one of them. Yes, yes. Um, so we have these twins, and they even began in rivalry from the very beginning. See, the firstborn already had it set for his life. He knew what his future looked like. You know what it looked like? It looked amazing. It looked great. It looked with promises, with blessings, because firstborn, that's it. You get the birthright. You get the promise. But Jacob was the second one, just a few seconds right after him. He was a twin. So he was just a little bit um, after him. But he was not okay with that. And as they grew up, uh, they went upon their own ways. And this will uh, mention here on Genesis 25, 27. Um, let me read. And it says, the boys grew up 
and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, uh, the, the father, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country, famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. I'm starving, in other words. And Jacob replied, first, sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright from there on. See, right there you can see that Jacob was using him for his advantage. See, the thing is, is that it didn't just come up sudden like, hey, give me your birthright and I'll give you this soup. No, it was something inside of Jacob from the beginning that he was wanting, that he had a desire, that he said, I want that birthright. I want something that I don't have that my brother has. And the thing is, is that one characteristic trait that I want to emphasize about Jacob was that he had an insatiable desire, an insatiable desire passion that could not be shaken by anything such a desire that he would even do this as an option you will see throughout his life that I'll just emphasize on a couple things about Jacob is that he was a hard worker he was persistent he could not stop until he got the full-on blessing and as I continue to talk I will uh, emphasize on those parts but I want to tell you guys is that desire is absolutely powerful could you agree if you are in desire to lose weight, you will lose it. I have seen people that once something clicks inside of them, they lose 20 pounds immediately. I mean, it's amazing what desire does to you. It's also a thing, a characteristic trait, when a man desires a woman, he will do anything and everything to get her. He will try to impress her, he'll buy her flowers, hopefully he buys her flowers, or anything he has to do to be able, because there is a desire, come on. A desire that is in some mothers that their children are in drugs and there's such a desire to see their a child saved and free from drugs that they would be praying and fasting for them because they believe that one day God will touch them. A desire, a desire that stirs and changes the future, a desire that does something inside of us that we cannot ex explain why, but it does something. See, the thing is when you have desire, it changes reality. When you have desire, it changes something inside of you. It changes what you see in the outside. See, Jacob was not okay. Insatiable means not satisfied, not quenched. You could not quench his desire. He had this passion to be able to have a blessing. Has anyone ever felt like an underdog? Kind of like secondhand, not, not there. You're kind of there, but you're just not there. Okay, there's always someone better, always something going uh, at you, and you're just kind of like, I'm just an underdog, I don't have that many talents, I don't have that many skills, I'm just not that much of anything. Maybe some of you guys felt that, and that was exactly what Jacob was feeling. See, that void, that feeling can only be filled by God himself. So I want to talk to you guys, if you have a desire tonight, many of you guys in this room and those that are watching, you guys all have a desire in some sort, in some fashion. Some of you guys desire to have your family free from a generational curse, or maybe you're in the verge of divorce and you have a desire to see your family restored. Some of you guys just simply have a desire to go and finish college because no one in your family has. Whatever your desire is, or maybe you want to prove something to yourself and say, you know what, I have what it takes because no one, my whole life someone told me that I'm just nobody, just like Jacob. They told him from the beginning that he was a liar, that he was a deceiver. That was his name. So you could imagine that he had a desire to have a blessing. But I want to tell you right now is that if you have a desire tonight, you have to do one thing is you have to partner up with the Holy Spirit with that desire. Because that desire can either bring you to your destiny or it can destroy your destiny. 
Remember that. Your desire can either bring you to your destiny or it can destroy your destiny. What do I mean? Is that if your desire is in the wrong hands, the enemy can use it to use you to be able to compromise anything that you have to be able to get that thing that you want. Just like Jacob. He became cunning and deceitful. He broke the family apart because... Because it's something that he wanted. So it is so important that you guys understand and that we understand that we need the partnership of the Holy Spirit. Because when we partner up with the Holy Spirit, he gives us his desires. He gives us his desires. And I want to tell you, when he gives you his desires, something changes in your heart. You become a different person. You know, a lot in our church, we're talking about compassion. We talk about, let us be on fire for God and fire for people. And some of us, we don't have that desire. It's just not there. And we're like trying to push it, trying to come to morning prayer, but it's not there. I want to tell you is that you can have it. You can't ask for it. You just have to have that will and ask God, God, give me that will. Give me that desire for more of you. Because when you have that, he changes your heart. This year, I had an experience where a Holy Spirit did that. And I shared this a couple of times, uh, Friday night prayer, or maybe at my home group. And I want to share with you guys because this was a very huge turning point in my life. And it was uh, this year where I had someone close in my family. And I come from a family that has a generational curse. And some of you say, How? that's such a very strong statement. How could you say that? Well, it was very evident um, every single person, a man, was an alcoholic. Uh, coming down from my father's side and my mother's side, uh, everyone was an alcoholic. And almost every single person is in divorce. And you're thinking, wow, that's a coincidence. Absolutely not. That is a generational curse, and it was coming after me. And uh, I broke that curse uh, based on our vision, and I will talk about that later. But right now, uh, what happened was it hit somebody a depression, a heaviness, a spirit of death hit somebody in my family. And it was so strong on them that I was afraid because they were really close to me. And I saw something happen to them. They became a different person. Every time I saw them, they were crying and weeping. There's just depression, this heaviness. You couldn't even enter into that household because it was so bad and so heavy that I avoided that place. I became resentful. I became so resentful, I just wanted to flee from that place because I didn't know how to help. I didn't know what to do. And I said, God, you have to do something. I can't do it because I can't, I don't know how to help this person. Only you, God, yourself can help. And I began to pray. And then what happened was I partnered up with God. And what happened was that Holy Spirit gave me compassion. Now, compassion is, oh, not pity, pity. It was compassion to the point where I was a different person. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I couldn't function as a person because the only thing I was thinking about was this person to be saved. All I cared was this person to be free. And I cried at night in the middle of the night. I would wake up just bawling and you're thinking, wow, you're a really emotional person. <laughs> no, it was Holy Spirit moving inside of me for this person on their behalf. And I was weeping and I was crying and I said, God, touch them. Tell me what to do. Move on their behalf. It was this moment between me and Holy Spirit. And then as I came and I came one time uh, over just to visit and I said, Holy Spirit, I'm ready if you're ready. I want to know what you want to do. What do you want me to say? And this person just was not there. They were just completely, you could talk to them, and it was as if you're talking to a wall. But I saw a moment of brokenness, and I was like, that's it. That's where it is. And I just began to pray for that person, and I began to cast out every single thing that could possibly be in there. And I just saw Holy Spirit touch that person faithfully. They fell under the power of God, and then they uh, got up, and something changed. And something changed. And I know how that changed because the next few weeks, I was just watching. I was like, okay, maybe it was just a prayer, whatever. And no, not one tear came from their eyes. The only tear of joy. And as I saw that, I was like, wow, what a powerful thing is when you desire. When you desire the things of God. When you partner up with Holy Spirit, what amazing, incredible things can happen. And you know what happened? Is that I realized that God wants to use me. That God wants to use you. I want you to repeat after me and say, God, God wants to use me. Wants to use repeat after me. Say, God, God wants, to bring wants to bring revival through me. Through me. It is true. 
Well, you didn't have to say that part. <laughs> you didn't have to say that part. But, and this is what the conference is all about. This is what the vision is all about, you guys. This little piece that I shared with you is something that our pastor is feeding us and striving for us to believe each and every one that is going to come to this conference or to this uh, weekend is to have a moment with God and believe, God, you can use me. God, you can take my desires and stir them up to you and you can use me to change your uh, change the surroundings of people in my life. He wants to do that. He wants to use you. And I believe that God wants to make that encounter with you and the desire, insatiable passion that will cause you to move and do things that you thought you would never do, you will do. And uh, the week after that, I had somebody from uh, my home group come and ask for prayer because they were really ill. And I prayed for them and they received a healing. Now, this is not about one person or one leader healing. It's about all of us. It's about each and every single one that is sitting here that God wants to do that through. Because God wants to build the confidence in you that you are a son and daughter of the Most High God. He wants you to believe that when you speak, there is authority. Because why? Because Jesus Christ said that you will walk through authority, that every single tra- you will trample over snakes and scorpions. Come on, there is going to be authority in your voice. There's going to be authority when you speak. That is our calling and that is what God has promised for us. Amen. And just like Jacob, here was this man that was completely not in content with himself. He wanted something more. And so he took that moment of someone else's uh, vulnerability and he took the birthright. And Esau freely gave it to him. Well, not really. He gave him a bowl of soup. But um, anyways, he gave it to him. So uh, two things is that when you have an insatiable passion and desire, partner up with the Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit uses desire. He works with desire. It says that you abide in him and he will abide in you. Is when you are drawn to him, he will be drawn to you because there's desire. Every single book that I have read and um, our youth group has read about Holy Spirit, it is one thing that is consistent in the generals of God. They say you have to have a desire of a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And that is our vision. That is our passion as a church, is to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen? That is our desire. We want more of Holy Spirit because when there's more of Holy Spirit, there is a move of God. There's a power. There is a fire that demons cannot stand in this place. Come on. That there's going to be something in this place, and we know it's because of Holy Spirit. And so that is one thing that um, Jacob had. Now, I want to move on with the story is that he also was very persistent. That's the second quality that I think is very powerful and that he has is he's persistent. You think that he was satisfied with the birthright? No. He wanted the firstborn blessing too. And his uh, mother helped him with this one and said, look, uh, Esau went to go... um, start hunting. This is the time where you can trick your dad for the blessing. And see, Esau was a very hairy man, and so he put on um, something that was hairy. I don't know. I don't remember if it was a sheep or whatever it was, but it was enough to uh, deceive Isaac because he was blind. He was of old age. And he went over there, and he said, is this you, Esau? And he said, yes, this is I. And he said, oh, it must be because you smell and you feel like him because he's hairy, and he must have smelled very lovely. Um, But he, he deceived him to receive that blessing. Esau came back and he was very upset, very angry that he, uh, uh, Jacob was afraid for his life. And so Rebecca, his mom, told him to go run, run after his life. Now, that's not a really great place to start with a blessing. Um, so, but uh, that's what happened. Now, God is faithful and God met uh, Jacob And this is is where I want to read off because uh, Jacob went on with his life. He got a family. uh, He got children. And he was blessed. uh, And he had many sheep. And he had just had a blessing. Anything that he touched was a blessing. Just like that promise that he received, that blessing he received from the firstborn. Now, he came to the point where uh, he was alone. And... He couldn't run anymore from what he's done because you have to understand that 
uh, he was guilty because he knew his brother Esau. This is after a few years. Uh, his brother knew uh, he felt guilty for what he did because he knew Esau was coming and he was afraid for him. He was afraid to meet him. So he knew that that was on his conscience. You knew that that was on his mind, that he did something wrong. That blessing is his, but it's not really his. And then he had to have a face-off between him and God and be like, God, I want to know, will you bless me? I took a blessing, but I want to know, will you bless me, this person, how I am? He's the God of Jacob. And he said, God, will you bless me? And this is the scripture, it says Genesis 32, 24. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Repeat after me. Say, I will not let you go unless you bless me. You guys don't have to repeat after that. And the man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with man and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place uh, Peniel, saying, it's because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. See, it wasn't just a fight with God. It was a fight with himself because all this time he was told that he was this liar that he was the second person that he was just not enough so a lot of this fight this argument this constant wrestling match that he had with God was with himself to believe that he is not just a liar but there was something else inside of him he was a child of God that God was going to use him and to bless him. And like I mentioned earlier, he had this insatiable desire, this passion that caused him to not let go of God himself until he was blessed. See, there's going to be something about our church and it's something that's already being stirred inside of our spirits, all of us leaders and all that are coming or have been coming. We will not let go of this city until every single person knows about God. We will not let go until we see the divorce rates go down and the marriages restored. We will not let go until we see the passion stirred up, revival to happen. We will not let that go. And I believe is that this conference, what's going on, what we want for you guys to partake of this vision, wherever you are at, to believe that God wants to use you, that he wants you to know is that he wants you to bring revival to your city, to your surrounding. That is our God. We have to be persistent. We cannot give up. Just maybe if we did it the first time and it didn't work or the second time that you tried pursuing it, we cannot give up until we see the promise. And one thing that God said to Jacob that as he was going on his life, and this was very powerful, is that he said this. He said, I am with you and will watch, uh, watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring, bring you back to this land. And this is what God says. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. God will not leave us until he fulfills the promises of God. And that is to bring revival, to bring revival to our family, to bring revival to our city, to our nation. And that is something that we need to ask is the Holy Spirit to partner up with us tonight to bring that desire back for us to have a stirring to know that God wants to use us. Amen? That is something that God wants all of us to have. And I believe it in my heart that this vision is going to expand to other churches because this conference is not just about a show, but it's to awaken. Amen? How many of you guys believe that God wants to do that for you? How many of you believe that God wants to use you? Amen? And I want us just to take the time. We're going to pray for the conference tonight. But we're also going to pray for this night. We're going to pray for you. Every single person that is here. I want you guys to understand that God sees your desire. God sees maybe something that you're going through. Or that you are fighting with today. Maybe you are fighting with drugs or alcohol. Or something. You're fighting a generational curse. Or maybe on the verge of divorce. Whatever it may be. I want you to know is that God is more powerful than that 
feeling, that desire of yours, that bondage, that stronghold, that sickness that you're battling with tonight. And God wants to set you free, amen? And He wants to do a new awakening in each and every one of us, come on. So I want us just to rise up right now and I want us just to worship and give God all of our desires.